the message that I've been getting loud and clear and more and more strongly as time goes by is that it's time for him to go. And I agree. Well, it's been just over 24 hours since longtime Liberal MP Sean Casey said it's time for Justin Trudeau to go. He's the second Liberal backbencher since the Toronto St. Paul's by-election defeat to call for Trudeau's resignation as leader. And sources tell CBC News there is this bigger effort underway within caucus to force the leader out. Trudeau's cabinet says he still has the support of the majority of caucus. The reason um, I've come into politics uh, is because of Prime Minister Trudeau. It's never happened before in the history of our country where the economy is going up and our pollution has been going down is because of the Prime Minister. He has my entire trust and support. Well, I think the vast majority of us are keep focusing on what matters to Canadians. It's, uh, it's about the cost of living. It's about making the lives of Canadians and their families better. The other questions of, of interest to MPs need to be discussed within the caucus. All right, we're going to talk about this with the power panel, Amanda Alvaro, Andrew Thompson, Tim Powers, and Sherelle Evelyn. So, Amanda, uh, Sean Casey, uh, who is not one of the anonymous whisperers, uh, <laughs> he, he said to me, I don't want to fuel things anonymously. I want to put my name and my face to it. And so he did that. Joins Wayne Long, who did it after Toronto St. Paul's, and Ken McDonald, who people forget about, because he was an early adopter. He was like 1.0 on, on this. Uh, there is this effort to get people to bring a demand to the prime minister to get him to reconsider his leadership that's going to come to a head at, by caucus next week, Wednesday of next week at the latest, if not before. What do you make of what's happening inside your party? I mean, what do we, okay, so what do we know right now? We know, you mentioned Wayne Long, Wayne Long, who's not running next time. Sean Casey, who presumably doesn't want to be a liberal, I guess, because the prime minister, Justin Trudeau, is the leader of the party and he's lost the, the confidence of the leader. Um, so we've heard about these 20 names, most of whom are anonymous, which means that there's 133 names that aren't on this letter or petition, neither of which has been uh, put in front of anybody at this point. And I think when you look at, you know, cabinet ministers and those who have been approached, those with big name recognition, those with big portfolios and big responsibilities within the party, all of them have provided the same message. And that is that they, you know, they still have the confidence in the leader. And I think more importantly, they don't want to be seen as, you know, having these internal fractures and cracks within the party, which really just serves to undermine what it is that the party is trying to do right now. So I think it's really challenging when stuff like this happens. I think it's not totally unexpected, um, but it would be, you know, I think it would be much worse if some of the, both the names were bigger names or if there were a sizable number or if there was an actual letter of tradition that had been produced by this point. Andrew, what, what's your read of it? Like, uh, I, like, I appreciate the challenge the Prime Minister and his people have. This is punching fog, right? Like, Sean Casey is at least a name, and I know they dismiss sort of Ken McDonald and Wayne Long as, as not running again. But I've talked to people who want to run again and are part of this effort. Sean Casey wasn't part of this effort, so you stack him on to the numbers. 2030, I don't know where it's going to be when it all ends up. Uh, but it, is this a threat, or is this just whining and grumbling from a disaffected backbench? Well, there's something very fundamental happening, and this happens in caucuses, I think, of, of all parties as they run into electoral uh, headwinds. And that is the question of how do you bring in uh, the very simple uh, fact that what you've been doing doesn't work? Uh, and how do you do that in a way that's respectful to the person who's leading the party, uh, who's obviously given it their all, and who uh, you know is currently in the job? Also, who has the ability to dole out jobs? It uh, would be shocked if any uh, federal cabinet minister came forward and said that the prime minister who appointed them to the role uh, all of a sudden didn't have their confidence. So I think, you know, we need to understand that this is really uh, quite a courageous move on the part of some of these backbenchers, uh, you know, to speak truth to power. The question is, I think what the, the caucus is probably grappling with is, is there still another way out? Mm -hmm. and we've talked about this before, you know, there's all sorts of levers you can pull. You can change your policies, you can change your cabinet. You can change your rhetoric. If none of that works, and none of that to date has worked for the Liberals, despite a number of policy changes to realign with where the public is, you have to ask yourself what's left. And at this point, for better or worse, it's coming down to a referendum uh, on the Prime Minister himself. So that's really what the, the Liberal Party needs to sort out. But there's almost no way for a party to push its leader out if the leader won't go voluntarily. And the only other thing I would say is, this kind of public um, angstiness this, uh, that's going on within the Liberal caucus isn't necessarily conducive to giving the Prime Minister a window to step out. 
And you saw that in the, in the South uh, with uh, Biden and Harris, uh, in terms of Biden really needing a clean way out. They're not, uh, at this point, have obviously decided that there's just no clean way out for Trudeau. Right. Uh, he either needs to, to uh, you know, tough it out, which he's, he seems intent on doing, or he's got to fall on his sword for the good of the party. Yeah, Tim, I don't know who the Nancy Pelosi of the Liberal Party of Canada <laughs> is. I, I don't know if there is one. Manda, uh, a young <laughs> version, a very young version. But, but uh, I mean, he didn't sound like a guy today on the stand with what he did earlier, you know, in terms of going after Polyev and the Conservatives, like a guy who's getting ready to go next week in, in the face of caucus resistance. Yeah, but the, that's... The uh, uh, the Prime Minister's disposition anyway. Like he, particularly right now, he's a trained boxer, he's a fighter, he's going to be positioning himself to fight until such time as he's not. So I'm not shocked by his disposition. Uh, a few things. It, fascinating to see Stephen Guibault out defending the Prime Minister. Not that I'm surprised by that, but as choice of messenger, because as you know, he has been a lightning rod in the Liberal caucus for many. So mm. I'm not sure if that, that probably does help in Quebec, yes. But for the rest of the caucus that's maybe irritated, Stephen Guibault reinforcing Justin Trudeau probably is not the best thing that's possible. On Sean Casey, and I know Amanda was not diminishing Sean, but I think it's important to understand Sean understands party politics, right? Before he became an MP, he was the president of the Liberal Party of PEI. He's been a long time liberal activist. So he gets very well that what he is doing is outside what is normally done. And it's yeah. hard to believe because unlike Ken and Wayne, he does intend to run again, whether, as Amanda may have suggested, this prime minister will sign his nomination papers. Well, that's what he another, said last night, too. It, yeah, it yeah. is another thing, but it's, you know, you have to commend him a little bit because there is this silent war of an invisible letter and a quill and God knows what else, parchment, that they're going to sign this with. But, you know, he is out there doing that. Whether this is, encourages mm. others to do the same, we'll see. The last point I would make, and you know this well. I mean, I believe Sean when he says to me, when he goes, or said to you, and he had said to me on the radio today, when he goes to the doors, people are saying this because anytime I go home in Newfoundland, which has a long tradition of electing federal liberals, they'll say, yeah, yeah, Prime Minister's done some good things. Time to go. Time to go. Time yeah, to go. No, it's so, turned on him back home. There's no question. And, and I think it. that's, they're all hearing yeah. that in a large parts of the country, despite the good story Amanda is rightly trying to tell. Yeah, and, and look, Cheryl, I don't think like Stephen Gilboa was sent out to defend the Prime Minister today. I just think he was a cabinet minister at an event in your cameras, and that's what happens. And that's what's going to happen right now. But a guy like Sean Casey, he got elected in 2011. Yeah, was it Liberals easy? remember that election. Not a lot of them got elected. 34 of them, I think, right? And and, and so he's he's not someone who rode in on coattails and stuff. He, he got elected in difficult times. I mean, the Hill Times is plugged in with the caucus and the backbench in particular more than just about anybody. I mean, what are your thoughts on where this is going? Well, it's interesting just to watch kind of the, the, the different camps that are going on with this. I mean, our boss, Rana, he had a story today about an email uh, that, you know, a couple of uh, MPs, Liberal MPs put out saying, hey, can you guys cut this out? Because it's making yep. us look like fools. That was their words. Ooh, it's making us look like fools. People are watching us. People are, are w watching us fight with each other, and that's not helping. Nobody has ever won an election by fighting each other. Um, so you have that going on at the same time as you have this other groundswell of people saying, yeah, but it's it's we're, we're not saying it's you, um, Prime Minister, but it's definitely you. <laughs> and we would we like you a lot, yeah. but we really need you to go for the good of the party. I um, mean, it's been nine years. It's Canadians generally vote people out as opposed to voting people in. I don't know mm. if, you know, you could throw the littlest hobo in there as the leader of the <laughs> Liberal Party and you probably would still end up with a Conservative government. Um, so it's not necessarily, uh, you know, a, a, a panacea to, you know, saving the, the party in terms of keeping right. hold of government, but when you have these people coming to you and as they're going to come to the prime minister and say this is what we're hearing at the doors 
and they can right. they can couch it as hey this is our constituents concerns it's not it's not us we're here to reflect the 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 views of our constituents that's what we were elected here to do um, and this is what they're telling us and how long are you going to ignore that that becomes I think a far more difficult thing to argue against I think Michael Ignatieff might have been the little hobo candidate the whole world is his home right? he just kept moving on uh, but but you know <laughs> Amanda Shirell makes an interesting point there and it kind of reflects the conversations I've had with some of the plotters some of the core people some of the people who have signed the letter they haven't turned on the prime minister as a person or as a leader it's they feel their constituents have and it's it's over and that's kind of the message you're trying to deliver him and I don't know how you push back on that if you're the prime minister now I don't know if it's gonna get to critical mass where it'll mean anything but how do you even approach this if it's that sentiment and the lack of clarity you have on how big this movement is or isn't at this point well, that's kind of sucking and blowing at the same time, isn't it? I mean, come on now. But by me or by them? Not, <laughs> not you, David. Good grief, not you. Um, but to suggest that, oh, well, this has nothing to do with me. I'm just the messenger is, is, is ridiculous because yeah. there are forums for that. There are caucus meetings. There are telephone calls. There are you know, opportunities internally to have these discussions to have secret papers and petitions that are mm. being signed and then go on a media tour to talk about it um, doesn't feel to me like I'm just trying to deliver the message. It, it, and, and I think, too, a lot of, I agree with a lot of what Sherelle said. I mean, it's very challenging, obviously, for a party that's trying to hold itself together and some of these fractures and, and factions within the party, you know, just play into this narrative yeah. that there's division and that there are, you know, there are challenges that are really difficult to overcome. So, of course, the party wants to present itself as much as possible in a united way. And there's also the, the, the existing and adjacent challenge of if not Justin Trudeau, then who? And is there time? And those are questions that obviously the party is also grappling with. So it feels to me as an irresponsible thing to do to you know, blow the sirens and the horns mm -hmm. in order to make a lot of noise when the party, I think, is still trying to understand what are the best mechanics to get it to the next election with the best leader who can get who can take them there. Yeah, and the caucus must be in reply all hell, to go back to what Sherelle <laughs> said earlier. For sure. A Andrew, yeah. <laughs> Andrew Ortenis, I have just last word to you to close off the conversation. Well, I mean, you know, to a, <laughs> on Andrew's point, they've had a year to sort this out. It wasn't a good time a year ago for them to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. It's uh, now they're claiming the, you know, the clock is ticking down. Well, of course it is because they've been running it out. Uh, I mean, they've tried all sorts of things. It, it hasn't worked. It doesn't change uh, anything in terms right now about what the public is feeling, whether the public isn't looking, I think, at whether the Liberal Party is united or divided. It's a question of whether the Liberal Party gets it that there's a problem and that, uh, that they are looking to them uh, to deal with it. You can't have 85% of people in the polls saying that they uh, think it's time for a change in government and not have that somehow reflect in the halls of power and in the leader's office. So, you know, how this plays out, I think there is, uh, you know, liberals are certainly not uh, out of it yet. Uh, I think that they have a number of uh, things that they could still do, certainly to become competitive in the next election. Uh, and uh, the question is whether they will utilize any of those tools in the coming weeks to get there. Okay, uh, we're going to find out. Caucus is a week from today. We, we may know. I want to thank the Power Panel. Amanda Alvaro, Andrew Thompson, Tim Powers, and Sherelle Evelyn.